Welcome! In this video, I'm going to explain the concept of resolver functions. We'll also take a look at a couple of concrete use cases and practical examples to help you get started. Let's jump right in. In general, resolver functions allow you to extend GraphQL's auto-generated CRUD API with custom queries and mutations. Potential use cases for resolver functions are to wrap an existing API, such as Stripe or some microservice of yours. You could also use resolvers to implement shortcuts for your existing GraphQL CRUD API or to implement custom authentication workflows. And for these use cases, I'm going to show you two practical examples right now. The first example that I want to show is for the first use case to wrap an existing API. In this case, we're going to add the capability to our GraphQL API to fetch the weather for a specific city by using the Open Weather Map API. To create a new resolver function, you have to go into the GraphQL console, select the Functions tab in the side menu, and then click the New Function button. Next, you have to decide what kind of function you want to create. So in this case, it's a resolver function. The next step then is to actually go ahead and implement the resolver. And you need to start by defining the interface for it. So here, you need to extend either the query or mutation type from your GraphQL schema. And in our case, we're going to extend the query type by adding a new field to it that's called getWeatherByCity. And this also takes the city as an argument. It returns the getWeatherByCity payload that only contains the description and the temperature for the weather. All right, now that we defined the interface, we can go ahead and implement the actual function. Here's what it looks like. We first retrieve the city from the event that is being passed into the function. Then we're constructing the endpoint with that city as a query argument. And then finally, we're just calling fetch on that endpoint. And then we're converting the data that we receive from the Open Weather Map API into the structure that we defined with the get weather by city payload up here. Great, that's all we need to do for the implementation. We can now go ahead and save the function and actually test it inside a GraphQL playground. Here, inside the GraphQL Playground, we can now send the getWeatherByCity query to our API and simply pass the name of a city as an argument. In the selection set, we can then specify the values that we added to the getWeatherByCity payload, so the temperature and the description. And when we send the query, we invoke the function that we just implemented, which is then going to call out to the Open Weather Map API and fetch the required information from there. Now, as a second example, I want to show you how you can implement your own authentication workflow with a resolver function. For that, I have defined the type called email user inside my schema. And that email user also has, of course, an email and a password field. So we want to implement an email and password-based authentication workflow. And more concretely, what we're going to build is a sign-up resolver where a user can provide an email and a password. And we are first going to create the actual user node inside the database. And then we're going to return an authentication token for that user so that the user can authenticate all the subsequent requests that they're going to make against the API. So just like before, let's go ahead and start by creating a new function. This time again, of course, we're going to create a resolver function. And the interface for that resolver function is going to look as follows. So this time, we're extending the mutation type with a field that is called signup email user. That takes as arguments the email and the password of the user, as I mentioned before. And then the payload, the return type of this particular mutation, consists of the user ID and the token that the user can use for, for authentication later on. So here is what the actual implementation of the function looks like. We again receive the event as an input argument and then retrieve the email and the password from the event as they have been passed by the user when they sent the mutation. We then create this API variable here, which gives us a nice interface to send queries and mutations to our GraphQL API. Next, we check whether the email is actually valid. And if that is the case, we check whether we already have a user in our database with this particular email address. If this is the case, we're going to return an error to the user indicating that this email is already in use. 
But if that's not the case and we don't have a user with that particular email in the database yet, then we're going to create a new user node with the email address and the password that have been provided. Once the user was then created, we're going to use the generate auth token method to actually go ahead and generate the authentication token for the user based on their ID and the type inside our database. When we receive that token, we can then package up the return values for our mutation. And that is the ID, which is the GraphQL user ID of the user that we just created, as well as the authentication token that we generated right here. And this is all we need to do for the signup function, so let's go ahead and save it right now. Now, just like before, let's go ahead and test this new signup function inside a GraphQL playground. I'm heading over to the playground and I'm calling the new signup email user mutation that we just created. I'm going to enter my email address, as well as a simple password, and ask for the ID and the authentication token in return. Now I'm going to send this mutation and we receive the ID of the new user as well as an authentication token. And if we navigate over to the data browser, we see that this new user has been created and the password is actually stored as a hash as we implemented in the signup function. This is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about our new resolver functions. If you have any questions, you can check out our documentation or post your question in our forum.